Hello, and welcome to this Illinois Early Hearing Detection and Intervention Program mini presentation. During this brief presentation, we will discuss five reasons why providers such as yourself should encourage families to follow up after we refer from a newborn hearing screening. Included throughout the presentation will be resources for you to use for family materials. In addition, communication tips from parents of children with a hearing loss will also be shared. So reason one, you don't know what you don't know. Keep in mind that you most likely don't know the history and dynamics of these families you come in contact with. This leaves both you and the family in the same situation of you don't know what you don't know. News of their newborn child not passing the hearing test may leave the family with a variety of emotions and questions. They aren't prepared for what the next step should be and most likely don't have a plan in place. They typically will be looking to you for direction and clear and concise information. Even though we know as professionals that 95% of children born with a hearing loss are born to hearing parents, that doesn't mean that the new parents are aware of that statistic. This could lead them to feeling that there is no need to follow up or that the test results could be incorrect because they have no family history of hearing loss. It is okay to assure the family to follow up and to even share that statistic. Focus groups have shared that they would rather have heard the statistic and been prepared for the possibility of hearing loss than being told, don't worry, it's probably nothing. A family's focus after the birth of their child varies to due to the excitement, uncertainty, and newness of their little addition. Don't assume that because this may not be the family's first child that they will be able to handle the news of the child not passing the hearing screen and will be quick to set up that follow-up appointment. The same goes for first-time families. The best gift you can give families is to assist them in setting up a follow-up appointment before they head home and get wrapped up in their day-to-day -day activities. Also, do not assume that their pediatrician or another professional will follow up with them. Take the time to ensure that this baby will get the care and service they deserve. Reason two, the impact on the child. If a hearing loss goes undiagnosed, there are many potential impacts that can occur in that child's lifetime. The child can have delays in language, setting them apart from their hearing peers. The sooner a child is identified, the quicker a family can make decisions and potentially help their child excel. If hearing loss goes undetected, that can leave the child unable to communicate with others. This can lead to frustration, stress, and behavior problems for that child and the family. A child can become disconnected from others because of the inability to understand the hearing world from their lack of communication, language, and incidental learning experiences. And of course, we don't like to think about it, but kids who are deaf and hard of hearing are at a higher risk for both abuse and neglect. Like any child, they are at risk. However, as children who might not always be able to communicate easily and fluently or understand the nuances of conversation with neighbors, caregivers, or strangers, they are at even a higher risk of being victims of someone somewhere. It is known that youth who are disabled are four times more likely than youth who are not disabled to be physically, emotionally, or sexually abused either by their caregiver or with their in, within their own homes by family members. And because of this disability, the youth may not have a way to express what is happening to him or her or even know that it is wrong. It's hard to imagine that a newborn may face some or, or, or all of these challenges. By supporting and educating the family through the transition from the newborn hearing screening to the follow-up appointment, you are enabling their child to avoid these unnecessary and potentially harmful impacts. Reason three, you are not on your own. Sometimes it might be daunting to support a family in a process that may not be a second nature to you. There are resources to support you and families, such as our state resources of the Illinois Eddy website or Illinois Hands and Voices. There are national resources. The Hands and Voices website has a video called Lost and Found. We found this video to have great impact on families 
encouraging them to follow up and that they might have worries and they might have questions, but there's support there for them. There's also a parent guide on the CDC website. And the Communicate with Your Child website has a family-friendly guide to take the family through the next steps. Reason four, make sure that you document progress and the results of what happens with this family. Make sure that this documenting the progress and the context of the family has made so far. And the reason being is that it creates a paper trail um, and it helps the family that you are working with, but the other providers that might also help the family as well. Remember that most often families and newborns are overwhelmed with many of the changes that take place by being either a first-time parent or balancing the family that they may already have while caring for their newborn. The more that you can assist the families by either helping them set up the next appointment or calling the professional to refer the family, the more likely that they will see that appointment through. It's not that they wouldn't intentionally ignore setting up an appointment or making the next call themselves, but sometimes between the uncertainty of the possible diagnosis, hectic schedules, and the possibility of additional needs that the child may have, it may not be their first priority. Also keep in mind that the providers that you are suggesting that they contact for the next step could be just as busy. So by taking out all of those what ifs, out of the equation and setting up the next appointment or making the call to the professional to refer the family, you know that they are on their way, then you know that they are on their way to the next step. You have done all you can for them. Reason five, it's worth your time to work with these families, to see them through the process. Hearing loss is a silent disability, sometimes because the family may not notice the signs or they may see their child react to sounds on occasion doesn't mean that hearing loss isn't present. Remember back to that statistic of 95% of children born with hearing loss are, are from hearing families. That number is huge, but typically not expected by hearing parents. Be sure to ask the parents what they need. You may be surprised by their comments. They may not be making an appointment because of transportation issues, concerns over missing a day of work, or right now, maybe their biggest concern is feeding, clothing, and diapering their newborn. Nothing that is related to the potential of hearing loss. Don't assume that because the family is educated, financially stable, et cetera, that they are able to understand and ready to follow through. Treat all families the same. There have been stories of families not wanting to ask questions or for clarification because they didn't want to appear un undereducated or unprepared to take care of their newborn. After all, they are parents, they should know what to do, right? Explain that no question is silly, and that if you don't know, that you would be happy to help them find out more. Don't be afraid of their questions or concerns. Yes, it's scary. You don't know what they might say. But the worst that can happen is that they ask you something you don't know. Many parents comment that they would rather have the professional be honest and tell them that they will look into it instead of making something up. Remember that the news that their child didn't pass the hearing screening is scary to them too, because most likely this is their first experience with hearing loss. Many of the parents who participate in focus groups continue to state that they don't want professionals to sugarcoat the comments or news that you have to give them. They would be more likely to follow through if they had a straightforward answer and all the facts than if they heard the comment, don't worry, it's probably just fluid. Or maybe it's the equipment. That is the worst thing you could do to that newborn. Share with them what you do know. Your child did not pass the test. Let's follow up and go from there. Encourage them to handle it one step at a time and that there is support along the way. If they would like to talk to another parent, then encourage them to call Illinois Guide by Your Side. Guide by Your Side is a free statewide program for families with children who have a hearing loss. Each parent guide on the team is a parent of a child with hearing loss and is available to provide unbiased support and resources. Even though their child may not have an official diagnosis, this program can still be a sounding board for the family. They can follow through the next steps with the family, and then if their child is diagnosed, they've already made a connection with the parent guide through the Illinois Guide by Your Side program and have someone they know who is on the same journey. 
This support has shown to have a healthy impact on the family rather than grief and distance from their newborn because of the many questions and thoughts of the unfamiliar journey ahead. Thank you for listening to this presentation. Your participation will offer families a clear vision of what to do after their child does not pass their hearing screen. You have resources that you can share and even look to for more information for yourself. Remember that at any time if you need assistance in finding appropriate providers to refer a family to, questions about screening, the steps after a child is screened, or any other situation regarding newborn hearing, you can always contact the Illinois Early Hearing Detection and Intervention Program. They are there to support you. You can reach the Illinois EDI program at 800-322-3722 or through email at ilsound at uic.edu or on their website at www.illinoissoundbeginnings.org. Thank you.